<laughs> come on. Anybody come to worship him tonight? Come on, stand to your feet. Let's worship him. Strong man boast in his strength. Let not the rich man boast in his riches, but let the humble come and give thanks to the one who made us, the one who saved us. I will boast in the Lord my God. I will boast in the one who's worthy. I will boast in the Lord my God. I will boast in the one. wisdom oh let the strong man boast in his strength let not the rich man boast in his riches but let the humble come and give thanks to the one who made us the one who saved us i will boast in the lord my god i will boast in the one who's worthy i will boast in the lord my god I will boast in the one who's worth. I will boast, I will boast in the Lord my God. I will boast in the one who's worthy. I will boast in the Lord my God. I will boast in the one who's worthy. He's worthy. I will make my boast in Christ alone. I will make my boast in Christ alone. I will make my boast in Christ alone because he's worthy. I will make my boast in Christ alone. Come on, lift your voices. I will make my boast in Christ alone. my soul his blood covered my sin I believe I believe my shame is taken away my pain is healing his name I believe I believe I'll raise the banner Cause my Lord has conquered the grave My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives My Redeemer lives I'm sin in my soul his blood has covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. 
Yeah, my pain is healed in his name. I believe. I believe. I'll raise a banner. Cause my Lord is the grave. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Yes, it does. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer. My Redeemer. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. You lift my burdens and I'll rise with you. I'm standing on this mountain top to see your kingdom come. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Yes, it does. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer lives. Come on, put your hands together. Our Redeemer lives. My 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 Redeemer lives. Take this offering that I bring. Humbly I fall on my knees to proclaim your everything. My life's nothing without you. Take my hand and lead me through. You are my sustaining love. I live to worship you. I live to worship you. Here I am. Here I am worshiping you with all I am worshiping you. Worshipping you Take this offering that I bring Humbly I fall on my knees To proclaim Lord, that you're everything. My life's nothing without you. Take my hand and lead me through. You are my sustaining love. I live to worship.
worshiping you with all I am worshiping you bowing down in spirit and truth lifting hands worshiping Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes and let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. so highly exalted glorious in heaven above humbly you came to the earth you created all for love's sake became poor so here I am here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me, and I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross I'll never never know how much it really cost to see my sin upon that cross it cost to see my sin upon that cross I never never know how much it really cost to see my sin upon that one more time I'll never know I'll never never know how much it cost because he paid the price to see my sin upon that cross I'll never never know how much it really cost to see my sin upon that cross so here I am to here I am to bow, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say, Lord, that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together.
altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. And the church all said, Amen. You may be seated. Here we go. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good morning. I meant evening. I meant evening. Came out afternoon. I said good morning to Miss Betty just to test and see if she was paying attention. She said good morning. Time to go to bed. Welcome. I want to thank you guys for coming out. As you know, Pastor Greg is... Uh, floating in the boat right now still <laughs> in the middle of the, <laughs> the deep blue sea. Uh, I, I'm assuming they'll be back sometime tomorrow. And um, I uh, got an interesting, uh, some interesting info for you tonight. Uh, I've been praying about what to share for, for this session. I'll be doing next week's as well. And I had my plan all laid out. But no, God has a way of <laughs> changing your plans when you have things all laid out, all ready to go, thinking, I'm uh, just going to be good. I've been working on it, and God changed some things up. And I, I personally wasn't quite sure why I was going in that direction. And uh, later this afternoon, God began to show me why. Um, so we're going to dive in, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about worship tonight. And I hadn't planned on talking about worship. Actually, I planned on teaching on, uh, and I'll pick up next week on let's, the Watchtower. The Watchtower of the Wilderness is what I'm going to be talking about next week. And, um, but tonight it's worship. And I'm, I've been seeking God about why and what and where and who and all the W's. And... Um, there's several people that God wants to speak to on a personal level. And I, I wrote down everything that he said so that I can uh, convey that information to you directly so that you don't miss what God wants to say to you. And for me, I want to be obedient and do what God is asking me to do, and that's to, to deliver some information to you on worship tonight. I do believe that God wants to change some of our perceptions of worship. You know, it's just funny, we're coming in and we're talking about worship and how uh, people think worship is just singing or just clapping your hands or just standing up when, uh, when the musicians say stand up. It's much deeper than that. And I, I want to share with you some of the things that God put on my heart. And uh, God always gives me assignments. Um, whenever I minister, it's always an assignment. He tells me what I, kind of like the... Uh, 007. You know, he gets an assignment, and uh, once he gets the assignment, the message that it came on will destruct in 10 seconds. And now you're on your own. You, you choose to accept the mission, or you don't. You do. And as a minister, you choose to accept, to, to say what God tells you to say, not worrying about the repercussions, if you will, or you choose not to when you do what you want to do on your own. Either way, you pay the price. You pay the price. So I choose to accept the mission. And the mission is worship. And I'm going to read some of the things that God put on my heart, um, that my assignment really is to challenge your thinking a little bit tonight on the subject of who he is. On the subject of who he is. God will say, I want to change your perspective. I want to cause you to draw yourself closer to me through your worship. He said to me that there is this, this time that we're all in is a time of separation. He said that he's separating truth from lies. 
He says that he's separating the flesh from the spirit. He said that he's separating vanity and profanity from the same and bring sanity. He says he's separating the holy from the unholy. And then many folks are, are um, dealing with separation anxiety, uh, which is the difficult of, difficulty of being apart from something that has been temporarily sustaining you. Like a baby suffers from separation anxiety. They, they've been with their mom or their dad all of their life. That's all that they know. That's all that they've ever experienced. And when they're separated, they suffer some anxiety, difficulty in being away from the caregiver. God says many of us are suffering from separation anxiety. That we're entering into a time that he wants us to be taught about truth and transparency so that we can enjoy triumph in Christ. Truth and transparency so that we can enjoy the triumph in Christ. Now, as we were, God and I was conversing about this subject, <coughs> excuse me, I, um, I sought him for that particular thing, truth and uh, transparency. And uh, he took me to Psalms 51. And I shared a little bit about that on Sunday, but I, I just can't seem to get off that scripture. Kind of stuck there because there's so much meat in that one chapter. So we went there, and um, part of what he was saying, and God speaks to me in acronyms. So you probably hear me say or give you a lot of acronyms, and it helps me to understand you know, the, the more deeper things that God is trying to say. And, and as he spoke to me, as I was reading through Psalms 51, he talked about wants, he talked about ways, and he talked about, and this was strange, he said, was is. Was is. Kind of struck, strikes you funny, doesn't it? Struck me funny, too. He said, the wants are the things that folks uh, want to keep, things that they have to change, but they want to keep. Less of the world and more of him is what he's asking. He wants you to desire more of him or to want more of him, more of his presence. And your ways, you have to give up your ways and turn those ways over to him. Again, more of him, more of his presence. And the was is, is what threw me off, and I said, Lord, what is that? He said that those are the things that, quote, unquote, was or were. He said those are the past things that we hang on to that now interfere with our truthfulness about our current place or our current state of being spiritually. The wases. Things was that way or were that way, and I don't want those things to change. That's just how I am. People settle into that. They're not being truthful or transparent about their current state or their current place, the current state of being on a spiritual level. In essence, they operate in the flesh, and they never cross the line into the spirit because they're not being truthful, and they're not being transparent before the Lord. And he said that transparency meant this. And I looked it up. It says that transparency means able to be seen through, easy to notice or understand, honest and open and no secrecy. God wants us to be transparent. And the topic worship, he, he, he tasked me with trying to uh, draw a parallel from truth, transparency, and triumph to praise, thanksgiving, and worship. That, the, that there is a parallel between those things. That when you think about truth and transparency, and if I can be truthful and I can be transparent before the Lord, then it's going to allow me to have triumph in Christ. If I can be praising and thanksgiving, I'll enter into worship. Come with me to John chapter 4. I want to show you something. That, and trust me, God is trying to change your thinking, your current perspective. He wants you to cross the line, if you will. Cross the line from praise and thanksgiving into true worship. And many of us don't understand. We think in that we're, we're doing it. Oh, yeah. I'm coming to church. I'm standing. Woo! Go, Greg. 
go whoever's doing, I mean, it, it's there for them, but they've never crossed the line, and God's trying to get you over the line. And he told me that tonight there was a select few, a select few that he's ministering to who are dealing with this, and they don't even realize it because of truth and transparency. But they want to triumph. They want to experience triumph in Christ. They want to experience all that God has to offer for them or to them. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes the difference between when God is doing something for you, when God is giving to you, the difference between when, when you're worshiping God and it's based on the title of the message for who he is. Who he is. Everybody say that, who he is. Say it again, who he is. We're going to find out who he is, and it's going to change our perspective. It's going to change the way we see it. Worship will change for you tonight, prayerfully. That's, that's the assignment. If we all do what we're supposed to do. John chapter 4, verse 23. says this. It says, <clears throat> a time will come, however, indeed, it is already here, when the true and the genuine, genuine worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. In quotations, it says, reality. For the Father is seeking just such people as these as his worshipers. Verse 24, God is a spirit, in quotations, a spiritual being, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And in quotations, it says reality. I like to put in there what God told me, truth and transparency before the God. Here's what he's saying. The question that God uh, put to me, I'm going to put to you. Are you a praiser? Are you a thanksgiver? Are you, or are you a true worshiper? And you're saying, well, they're all the same. They're not. They're not. Like I said in the beginning, we're going to draw a separation. We're going to draw a line, and you're going to see the difference between those things. You're going to see the difference between praising and thanksgiving and what this is saying. God is spirit, and those who worship him will worship him in spirit and truth, that he's seeking genuine, truthful, transparent Christians who truly want to worship him, who truly want to enter into the presence of God and not just stay on the outside looking in. Because many of us are satisfied with staying on the outside looking in, because the price and the cover charge to go in is truth and transparency. You hear what I'm saying? The price or the cover charge is truth and transparency. And many of us don't want to pay. That price is too high because it forces us to reveal something, to uncover something, or to let go of something, or people can see us for who we really are. And there's a covering. We don't want to release the covering. We've got to keep the mask on. God wants to remove all of that. If you truly love God and you truly want to experience God, he's looking for truth and transparency. You won't get to the triumph part. You won't get to the worship part when you draw the parallel. You draw the parallel between truth, transparency, and triumph, between praise, thanksgiving, and worship. Triumph and worship line up. I, drew, I wrote it out on a piece of paper. And this is what I wrote as God gave it to me. Praise, thanksgiving, worship. And underneath, he drew the parallel. Truth, transparency, triumph. And he showed me that these line up. Your worship is your triumph. When you truly enter into worship with God, when you truly enter and you cross the line and you step into that place, it was just you and God. You've been truthful. You've been transparent. And you now entered into true worship with God. Your triumph. Because everything that you need done can be done. Because you've set aside all the baggage. You came in. You can't get into God's presence with baggage. Let's just make that plain. So if you truly enter into worship, you've set aside all the baggage. You're in a place and you're before God. That everything that you need done can be done. Everything that you're desiring of God can be delivered. Because you've crossed that line. You've moved to another place. You've gone to another level. And I believe that's what God wants for, for a lot of us tonight, is to get to that next level 
so that we can worship. God told me one time that worship was the opportunity of my lifetime. And I wrestled with that opportunity of lifetime. Because many times we think of money, we think of possessions, we think of things that God can do for us or give to us. That's how we associate worship with. God says worship is the opportunity of a lifetime to get into the presence of God. If you've ever been in the presence of God, you want to go back. You want to go back every chance you get, and you're going to do what you need to do to get back in there. And I'll tell you tonight, it's truth and transparency is what God wants from us. Then we can enter into that place before him. We can experience God at that level of worship. Unlike anything else you've ever experienced, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. I get that opportunity of my lifetime every day. Every morning, me and God, I go before the Lord, and I move into that place, and there's nothing. It's like nothing else exists. It's just me and him. We talk. We communicate. I get instruction. He takes away my tensions and my anxieties and the things that I'm fearful of, the things that I tell him in truth and transparency, and he deals with each and every one of them so that when I'm finished or when he's finished with me, there's peace, there's confidence. I can move in authority. I can go do the things that I need to do for the day because I, he's given me my orders for the day. He's dispatched his angels to protect and to keep me, and he put one foot in front of the other. He says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And thus, ordering is a process. God gives us processes. We've got to walk through some things, and I'm going to share a few things about that. Let me get back to where I was. Okay, we're, we're on the same page? Amen. Amen. All right. So, uh, we did John 4, 23 and 24. Are you a thanksgiver, are you a praiser, or are you a worshiper? One of the most misunderstood terms in the whole English language is the word worship. I want to read to you. It said, we often confuse the word worship with thanksgiving and praise. And the Bible does teach us that. It says 28 times in the King James Version about thanksgiving. I'm going to read to you Psalms 100. Uh, <clears throat> Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is, good, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. And when you go look at the word give thanks, that was in the Bible some 35 times. And listen to this. I want you to catch there's one word in this, in this scripture that I want you to hold on to. And, and we're going uh, to look at it a little later. First Chronicles 16, 7 and 8. Then on that day, David delivered first his psalm to thank the Lord into his hand of Asia and his brethren. He said, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds, that's the word, among the people. And the definition of thanksgiving is this. It says to render thanks to God for blessings that have been granted. Blessings that have been granted. I'm trying to draw a line here. I'm trying to draw some separation here. Thanksgiving is an easy thing for us to do because, listen to this, because the act of thanksgiving always hinges on the fact that God has already done something. It hinges on that, the fact that God has already done, past tense, finished. So we praise him and we give thanks for something that he's already done. And then there's the term praise. Praise is something that most often is easy for us to accomplish, again, because it's something that God has already done. Psalms 150, 1 and 6 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psalmetry and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance. Hallelujah. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. 
Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Because the word of our testimony says this. It says that we can praise and give testimonies because God does what? He heals us. He saves our souls from hell. He delivers us from the things that try to beset us. And he provides for us. We praise him for those things because he can give us those things. It also makes us and it gives us the desire to give thanks to God and praise him for what he has done in our midst. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. The, the difference that I want to bring to you and I want to ask you the question is this. Is it possible to be a thanksgiver and a praiser and not be a worshiper? Is it possible? then that's the separation. That's the piece I want you to see, because worship means this. It means pure adoration unto God, not based on the acts of blessing, not based on acts of blessing, but based on his nature and the fact that he is God alone and by himself. You see, thanksgiving and praise are contingent on what God has done, but worship is contingent on who God is. That's the separation that we need to get. That's the line that we cross when we move into worship. We realize that we worship him because of who he is, not because of what he's done, not because he's provided, not because he's given us a car, not because he's blessed us with money when we need money. He's done all of those things. Those are things that he's done. But we truly enter into worship when we cross the line, when we realize who God is who God is. Amen? 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 Because true worship says this, even though I lost my job, I'm, I'll still worship him. Because you have God, you are God and you have not changed. And God took me to an experience when I got laid off from my job to bring that point out. Because I wrote that down and then God started taking my mind there. What experience, what feeling did you have? Did you feel like worshiping God when you got that letter that says you're being laid off? Probably not. I know I didn't. I sat there at my desk. I sat there for a while looking down in my mind, and the devil took my mind there. I had a wife and three kids at home. I got a mortgage, Lord God. I got car payments. I got da 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 But you are good, Lord. If you close this door, then you've opened another one. So after about 15 minutes of going through all the lists of things that I had to be responsible for, I realize that I serve an awesome God. I realize I serve the God who can provide and that he closed the door and there's another door open. That other door brought me here. So, <laughs> so God worked it all out. But what he, what he allowed me and what he wanted me to see was that there was a difference. I could have not worshiped God. I could have sunk into depression or I could have sunk into something else. I went off and did something that God didn't want me to do or go find a job and go in a different direction. No, God says that serve me and worship me for who I am. He never changed. With or without a job, God did not change. I still serve an awesome God with or without a job. So that's what he's saying. So that's the test is who God is. That's the understanding that he wants us to get so that we can understand who he is and we can draw that line. True worship says this. It says no matter whether or not I have food, whether or not I have money in the bank, whether or not I have peace in my home, whether or not I'm being blessed, Lord God, I'm going to still stand with my hands raised in worship, Lord God, because no matter what you have done, you have not left me out there. I've never, he's never left me. He never forsaken me. He says that, Lord, you are the Alpha and Omega. I listed all these things. True worship says that I exalt God because he's the Alpha and the Omega, because he's my deliverer. Because he's my everlasting father. He's the first and the last. He's the holy one. He is the great God I am. He's the king of kings and the lamb of lambs. He's the prince of peace. Hallelujah. He's my redeemer, my savior, my victorious king. Hallelujah. That's what worship says. Not based on anything that he's done for me. It's not based on what I have right now or where I am right now. It's only based on the fact that he is God. That's who he is all by himself. Amen? And it's funny, when I was reading the scripture, what it said here about the kind of people that, that God is looking for. It says that he's looking for those people, the spirit in him, the truth, the reality. The Father is seeking just such people as these, 
as his worshipers. I want to give you a couple of examples of some folks who, are, who learned to draw the line. They didn't know where the line was, and they were confused with praise and worship, but God did something in their life, and it, he distinctly showed them the line so that they could cross over and understand who he was, and they could enter into true worship and become true worshipers of God. Abraham is a, a, one of my first examples. Abraham had been a praiser and a thanksgiver for a very long time. And for good reason. The Bible says that Abraham was a wealthy man. He had gotten a lot of things. He was loaded. I wrote down, he was loaded. He was like the Geico motorcycle man when money's falling off him when he's riding his motorcycle. <laughs> Just loaded, right? That's Abraham. He was full of money. Here's the point. It's easy to praise God when he's giving to you. But Abraham learned about worship when God not only stopped giving to him, but instead God required something of him. God required something of him, and that changed the whole paradigm. This is what he said, Genesis 22 and 5. Even though he had all these wealth and riches, it couldn't save the life of his son that God had told him to sacrifice. And he said in Genesis 22 and 5, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder, and we will worship and come again to you. And here's what God said. I wrote this down. It's Abraham. You've enjoyed the blessings from me for a long time, and your allegiance to me has never really been tested. But today, I will teach you what it means to simply worship me for who I am. He took worship to another level because he realized who God was, and it wasn't because God had given him something. It wasn't because of all the money that he had. His money could not buy his obedience because he was asked to do something that he didn't really want to do. So regardless of what he had, it couldn't get him out of the situation. Second um, example is our friend Job. I met somebody here named Job tonight, didn't I? Right over there. It's like, you don't know, I'm talking about your predecessor tonight. <laughs> Job. Chapter 1, verse 1 through 3, let me read it to you. It says, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, and 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that, his man, <clears throat> so that, his, that this man was the greatest of all the men in the east. Again, it's easy to praise God when you've got great substance. It's easy to give God thanks when he's given to you lots of things or overabundance. It's easy to love God as long as you're on the receiving end. But Job learned about true worship in a single day. When everything that he had was stripped from him, and, with, and, and this is what God said, without explanation, without apology, or without warning. He lost everything. But I want to look at Job's character in the midst of all of these things that happened to him, even after losing all of his children and all of their spouses and their children were gone. Job 1, chapter 20, I mean, verse 20. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head, and he fell upon the ground, and he did what? He worshiped. He worshiped and said, Naked come I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God falsely. Job realized something. He went from being a praiser and a thanksgiver, and he became a true worshiper in a single day because God took something from him. He had never experienced that before. Prior to that, it was always God was giving to him. He had an overabundance. It's easy to praise God and thank him when everything is going great and you got all your needs met and you don't have to go into worship. You don't have to get on your face in tears and snot to get before God to get something. Job experienced that, and it took his worship to another level. You see the line? He crossed the line. And that's what I believe God is trying to say to some of you here tonight that he wants you to cross the line. He's been good to you. He's blessed you. He's provided for you. He's taken care of all your needs, but you haven't crossed the line. 
He wants you to meet him in his presence. So I want to change you. I'm hoping that it changes your perspective on worship. I hope that it takes you to that next level so that you can get into God's presence. Some of you have never experienced God totally in true worship when you go before him fully naked before God. And I don't mean not having clothes on. I mean just before God, everything has been laid on the table. You've been truthful and you've been transparent before the Lord. And you enter into that place with him just totally naked. There's nothing left to tell you, Lord, I've laid it all out. I've asked for forgiveness for my sin. I've done it all. And now I'm before the Lord and I'm in his presence, totally naked and ready to receive. That's the place that God wants many of you here tonight to get to. And you've never experienced that total surrender. That total, that thing that just lets it all hang out for God. And get into that secret place with him. I promise you, if you've never been there, you want to get there. You want to get there. You want to get there. Amen? Amen. Amen. A third example are our three little Hebrew boys. Hebrew boys. I have a hard time saying that word. Hebrew. Our Hebrew boys. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah more commonly known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Y'all know who he is, right? You know those three, those three young men? <laughs> they had been, as you know, if you read the story, that they, they, became, they got elevated in the king's court because they had talents and skills and abilities, and they had been chosen uh, to work their way up the ladder in the Babylonian society. But one faithful day, they were tested. And the question was this, will you go on being successful according to the world's standards? Or, or even if it means dying, or deny, I'm sorry, even if it means denying God? Second question, or will you stand for what is right, even if it means dying in the furnace? It's easy to praise when things are going well again. And this is their answer. He said, <clears throat> if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Those three little words kept popping out and slapping me in my face. But if not, but if not. But if not, what are they saying? Regardless of what you say, we're not going to serve your gods. Even if our God doesn't deliver us out of the fiery furnace, we're still not going to serve. You could burn to a crisp. But if not, if our God doesn't do what we're asking to do, it's okay. That's worship. That's knowing who God is. That's not praise or thanksgiving. That's worship. But if not, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I love God, and I know who he is. He's sovereign over all things. He controls even this. If he chooses not to pull me out of the fiery furnace, guess what? It's okay. Amen? But if not. Mm, mm, mm. True worship says this. It says, we know that God can do it, but even if he doesn't, we will still worship him. We know that God can keep us safe, but even if he doesn't, it doesn't change the way we feel about God. So we can't let things change the way we feel about God. You know, it's easy, like I said, it's easy to worship God when everything is going well. It's a distraction in most times. Because when you think about it, when people pray and they get their blessing, what's the first thing they do? Prayer ceases. Bible study ceases in most cases. They don't come out to the healing service in most cases. Why? God didn't stop being God. He supplied your need. He delivered you. He gave you what you needed. He blessed you. But we have that tendency to we shrink back. And we're all guilty of it. 
We're all guilty of it. We've done it. God is saying this to us today. Don't be just a praiser and a thanksgiver. Yep, praise me and thank me when I give to you. Praise me and thank when I give to you. Worship me all the time. Whether I'm giving to you, whether I'm taking from you, whether I'm requiring something of you, worship me all the time. Enter into my place. Come on. I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I'm God is what he's saying. Amen? 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 Amen. But if not, hallelujah. This is what uh, I wrote that God told me that he wants for us to see. He said he wants us to begin to and continue to seek his face and not his hand. And I wrote this verbatim. It says, not what I can do for you, but develop an intimate relationship with me. It's not my blessings to you, but my communion with you. It's not just praising me or thanking me, but worship me for who I am, because I am God. Period. That's all he says. That's all he says. And I'm done. Let's give our God a hand clap of praise. Got three minutes to spare. Hallelujah. I hope, I, I, I really, I, I feel strongly that that's what God wanted me to share with y'all tonight. And uh, I pray that uh, it does exactly, because it says his word goes out and doesn't come back void. And we gave you a lot of word tonight, so I believe that it's, it's accomplishing exactly what he has asked it to accomplish. Yes. Sure, go right ahead. about who he is and this is what we meant they, they, they tied it in with prayer and who who he is and basically the same thing god had just given you to speak to us i took your notes did i borrow your notes yeah. <laughs> and i might add on tuesdays that's exactly what god has given me the past right. three tuesdays the songs that have been chosen to sing have all dealt with who god is that's it yeah. that's, that's right that's right you know what's really interesting is that god is tying so many things together so many things together. This past Sunday, I, I ministered on the house is not a home. I've gotten so many phone calls and emails and people tell, not because you did a good job, but it's because God was connected. God had done something or showed them something on the same subject. And, and, and to come and hear it here in the sanctuary confirmed it. It's kind of like the puzzle coming together and God's bringing it and he's ministering to people at different levels. So you need to see and pay attention to what God is doing it's all in the spirit. And you get into worship, you'll see it more clearly. I promise you that. Pastor. Uh, Pastor, that was awesome. Uh, you know, you said that worship is about being transparent. Mm -hmm. Transparent to God. Yeah. That's the easy part. <laughs> because God, we know that God can see everything. Yeah. Yeah. Our yeah. thought is being transparent Wonderful. among us. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. where we, we you, because you talked about the mask. In the presence of God, there is no mask. Amen. Right. Amen. He sees Amen. you the way you are. Amen. You know, and, and that's it. You know, it's where we work on that, us being transparent among each other, even among our wives and husbands, yes. you know, just Absolutely. being true. Good stuff. Worshiping in, in, in spirit yes. and in truth. Yes. You know, and that's, you know, like I said, that's where I need to work on, yes. being transparent among my brothers and my sisters, Amen. you know, and, and just being real. Yes. And that's difficult for a lot of people. For many reasons, they got other hurts and issues from the past that, that, that get in the way. I talked about roots, rocks, and rubbish. You know, we all have that stuff. And God's foundation is not going to be on solid ground if you don't get rid of that stuff. And it's the stuff that hinders us from progressing and growing and developing in Christ. We stay in a place. If we don't, you'll stay right where you are. And God showed me it's like treading water. You're putting forth all that effort and you're going nowhere. That's what it's like in the spirit realm when you don't remove and get rid of and let God deal with that stuff. You're not going to progress. You're not going to go to that next level of him. You're going to stay right where you are. You're going to tread water, and everybody else is going to be moving forward. And guess what you're going to be doing? Not going anywhere. So I encourage you to do that. Let's um, huddle up in our tables, and we're going to pray. Uh, pray for, I want you guys, for one thing, be praying for Greg and Linda's safe return. Um, 
they're riding on the boat right now, but they still got to come in. So we pray that they get in safely tomorrow and that there's no hindrances to that in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Hallelujah. Amen.